Uh, I want to move right now uh, to General Harris. General Harris, uh, who heads up our National Guard, as you'll recall, I gave him a new assignment, a different assignment, an additional assignment, I guess I would say, and that is to work uh, with Dr. Acton, to work with the Health Department, um, and to work with local hospitals, working with each of the regions of the state uh, to make sure that we have the capacity built out by the time the surge uh, of the coronavirus really comes on strong and, and hits us. So we have to increase the capacity. Our goal is to double the capacity as far as our beds and our hospitals. And General Harris has been directly involved in this and his team. He has a great team. Uh, they've been on the ground. They've been out in um, many, of the, many of your communities uh, doing assessments. And I want him to give a report on how they're doing. General? Thank you, Governor. As you said, sir, we're, we're dialed in with a laser focus on this build out to make sure that when we hit the peak of infections here in Ohio for the COVID-19 cases, that we give the frontline warriors, those, those healthcare providers, the best chance possible to ensure that no patient who needs healthcare goes without the appropriate level of healthcare due to shortage of beds or bed space or equipment. So we're working tirelessly at that. We have two great advantages working in our favor right now. One is the fact that we, we have a three or four week look at what we have coming. We know what other states have experienced. We know what other countries have experienced. And we're applying those lessons that we've learned from doing that to make sure that we provide the best care for folks here in Ohio. The second advantage is the fact that Dr. Acton and the governor some time ago strategized this, this regional approach so that the major health systems, the hospitals, the nursing homes within regions, all the health providers come together and work together to optimize the resources that they have. What that means is, is that we know, now we know under this structure that the sickest patients have, have the opportunity to land in a hospital. They're going to be in the, in the acute care facilities in the rooms that are set up to provide the care for those sickest patients. Other states have not had that, that, that advantage. So that's very important because that means that the facilities that we're looking at building out are gonna be for the less sick patients. That means that the requirements are gonna be at a lower level so that we can build those facilities out more quickly and provide the support that the healthcare systems need. So what you may see in the communities may not look like you've seen in other states. You may not see trucks full of, of construction equipment and builders building things because that's not the approach that most of the regions are taking. Most of the regions are taking the, the approach that we're gonna go into a larger facility and build out that facility for care of those lesser sick patients. So while you won't see guardsmen or engineers necessarily building things, what you will see are maybe maybe assembling partitions, partitions for, those, for those facilities, uh, the transportation of beds, so those are the sorts of things that we're looking at as, as we talk about building out facilities. And it's important to point out that it's gonna be different for every region because the hospitals in those regions are different, the approaches are different, but again, the strategy is to make sure that the sickest, the sickest patients land in the most critical care rooms so they get the level of care that they need. And, and so we are in support of the healthcare system, but it's important to emphasize that this is, this is a consolidated approach so it involves community leaders, it involves the healthcare providers in those communities, it involves the emergency managers. And when the governor talks about our teams that are on the ground, our teams are there not only to coordinate that effort and to interface with our healthcare systems, but we have other teams of engineers that'll be moving around the community doing the assessments of those facilities. So it's exciting to watch this develop because uh, the approach is working and we know that the approach is working and the key is to make sure that that we get the right resources right surge capacity to the place where it's needed the most at the right time and again when i talk about surge capacity it's not just the facilities we have lots of folks inside the department of health that are working to build staffing capacity staffing surge capability so that so that when a when those healthcare workers, those frontline healthcare workers uh, run out of capacity out there in the hospitals, we may be able to surge doctors, nurses, and other professionals to help assist with that. Those capabilities are limited, so it's important that we get them, that we prioritize and we get those resources to where they're needed at the right times.
And this is all occurring while the Guard's continuing its, its other missions. The food pantries, uh, we're working at 12 food pantries around the state. We expect that, that footprint to grow. Uh, the Guard's helping run uh, PPE warehouses for the Department of Health. And of course, our Ohio Military Reserve is running a donation warehouse at our Sullivan Avenue Armory. So we are open for business to take donations of PPE at Sullivan Avenue. And you can find that address online.